That is, that is actually at the heart of feminism. Feminism has been hijacked by many, Completely wrong. many groups. Fake news, F feminism... disagree. No, no, Anthony, Anthony. Oh, he's not a fan of yours anymore. Yeah. Sorry, Piers, we lost him. She said there's nothing... Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing radical about feminism. There are prominent American feminists like Linda Gordon calling for the destruction of the American family throughout America, Canada, and the UK. That, in my opinion, is extremely radical. In fact, it's probably a national security threat that should be examined by the American and Canadian and UK governments. Howdy, folks. Anthony Dream Johnson here, founder of 21 Studios, founder of the 21 Convention, founder of the 22 Convention, CEO of the Redman Group, and founder of 21 University, and your favorite worldwide president of the Manosphere. In today's broadcast, we're going to be going through the a clip of the, or actually the full interview. You just saw a clip up there briefly in the introduction. Now, that was an interview from January 2020, earlier this year, when Make Women Great Again was blowing up in the media. In the end, between January and February, and then beyond that, even more articles came out. We actually were broadcast and reached over 150 million people. Now, later on, I'll do a full broadcast about all the news articles and stuff like that. But by far, this was the biggest TV interview I've ever done in my life. Uh, biggest TV interview that was done and had anything to do with Make Women Great Again. And to my knowledge, it's one of the biggest and highest profile interviews ever performed in history uh, that was engaged with the Manosphere. It was actually, uh, I went on there with Janice Fiamengo, uh, an anti-feminist professor. I've interviewed on the Redman Group before or a little bit after actually this interview, but before right now in real life here, September, 2020. And the interview was actually done uh, by On Good Morning Britain in Britain. It's like one of the biggest TV shows in Britain, maybe even the biggest sometimes. It's really close to the number one. And it was done with one of the biggest news personalities in the world, Piers Morgan, and then his co-host Susanna Reid. And they also brought on two feminists from The Independent. Uh, it's a big UK newspaper outlet thing or whatever it is. And they had just done a hit piece on Make Women Great Again and our company in the Manosphere before that. They called the 22 convention Make Women Great Again disturbingly misogynistic, which I had a problem with, as you can imagine. Although the, at the end of the day, it's kind of a badge of honor. Uh, well, any, anyway, you guys will probably see, before we get into it here, some of you have probably seen the eight-minute clip on YouTube that was published shortly after the interview was done back in January. Now, eight minutes is on their channel, and that's fine, but that's actually about 40%, uh, less than half of the full interview which is about 19 minutes long. So this will be the first time that the full interview has ever been on YouTube. And they didn't publish it previously to YouTube in full, nor can I by itself. I have to give comment and uh, criticism on the video as we go through it to uh, you know fair use and copyright and all that stuff, be copyright safe. So this will be the best version you can get, and I'll do my best to keep my comments and criticism to a minimum. But I have to give some, otherwise I may get a copyright strike. So without further ado, I'm going to play the interview. And throughout, I'll per uh, periodically you know, pause it and give some comment insight to what was going on in real life and within the interview and things like that. I will say before we get going, uh, just a preface for the interview, and you just saw a clip of it and obviously the full thing. Uh, this was done, you know, I was in Florida, and this is going on in Britain, and then Janice is like on the west coast of Canada or something. So the time zones are all different here. And Janice, I think it was about midnight for her. And for me, it was like 3.30, almost 4 in the morning, and this is all done. So even with coffee and, you know, I took a nap before one of the show and stuff like that, it was like really late at night or in the morning, I guess, at that point. So that's something you don't really see in the video. But yeah, I'm like half awake uh, doing this, but did the best I could. And I'm pretty happy I thought it came out. And then uh, for Janice, you know, it was a little bit late too and all that. But we'll get into the technical details a little bit later on. I'll quit yapping, let you guys watch the video and uh, talk to you in a minute. Well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, not my yes, words. Me too. Not my words. I already think you're all great, all of you. Uh, that's according to a conference, well, not all of you, to a conference being held in Orlando, Florida, organized by men with only male speakers. And only women invited. The three day event will discuss topics like how to become the ultimate wife and get pregnant and have unlimited babies. Oh, well, there's a fertility workshop as well, apparently. So, do women really need this kind of help? We'll be debating that. First, let's have a listen to Anthony Dream Johnson. That's really his name, and he's the founder of the convention. We need to make women great again.
We have to drown feminism in content, positive ideas, and positive media, for men in particular. Women follow, men lead. We keep making men stronger, more powerful, more healthy, more game aware, more red pill aware. We can win this war. We can win this war? Okay, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. And in Vancouver, we have Janice Fiamengo, an anti-feminist Canadian professor from the <laughs> University of Ottawa, who supports the convention. And then... All right, guys, a little quick uh, tidbit here. So Janice is actually uh, not, you know, I never met her before the interview, but I did talk to her a few times through email and over the phone. So I got to know each other a little bit that way. And I had actually seen her on the Rubin Report and other videos she had done kicking ass, uh, you know, criticizing feminism on YouTube before this interview. And I was actually, they wanted me to bring a speaker from the convention onto the show, but I talked to a bunch of the speakers and one of them recommended that I bring a woman on. Well, first of all, he recommended, and we'll keep him anonymous, uh, just for privacy, but he recommended number one that I bring a speaker on who is super, super clean. That they would have a super hard time attacking because they would have enough ammunition attacking me anyway, given my history on the internet and speeches and stuff like that. So finding a speaker who is super clean. And then on top of that, someone just recommended, you know, bringing a woman on. And I, that really caught my attention. So that's one of the reasons I invited Janice on the show uh, above and beyond a speaker. You know, we had many to choose from over a hundred. I could have chosen from for this, but in the end I invited Janice and she was graceful to accept. And in my opinion, she kicks ass in this whole interview. You'll see that in a minute. But I'm very thankful for her coming on. And she's a big supporter of what we do. Like I said earlier, too, the time zones are, way, are different here. She's like three hours behind me. And they're five hours ahead of me. So that's going on here. And final little bit is that there's an audio delay for me and Janice. So we're obviously not in studio. We're in different parts of the world. And the audio delay is pretty big. And you're going to see that throughout the interview and how it affects it and things like that. That's one of the reasons going in studio is actually really important and way better than remote interviews like this even when they have professional videography and stuff like that for you available. Obviously, it's not done. this is not done with Skype or something like that. So audio delay, delay is pretty big, and that does become an issue without the interview, but mostly I think it's kind of positive and funny. So you'll see that as we go. But without further ado, we'll go back and let Janice and Piers uh, have a little chat here. In the studio, we're joined by Olivia Petta, a journalist at Independent Newspaper, alongside feminist and writer Rebecca Reed, both of whom I think it's fair to say take a rather dim view <laughs> of this convention. In fact, the word dinosaur may have been heard in the green room. Let's um, talk to Anthony Dream Johnson first. Can I? A very good morning to you, Anthony Dream Johnson. Can I just ask, what war is this that we're all fighting? It's the war on feminism, is the war I'm fighting. And feminists are fighting a war on family, motherhood, fatherhood, and family. And that needs to end immediately or as soon as possible. By the way, good to be here. I'm a big fan of Piers, or Piers. Okay. Oh, challenges to feminism and wokeness. Well, He's thank, an thank you, Dream. Uh, let me let me ask you what <laughs> what are the key things? Uh, and I, I've got a, some issues with. So you guys are aware, Piers Morgan actually does for a mainstream news personality do some pretty savage attacks on feminism and wokeness. I don't think he is fully uh, non woke. That's a thing or anti woke. But for a mainstream news personality, he pushes the boundary in that pretty far. And I've done research and seen that before uh, going on the show. So what I'm saying here is is legit. It's kind of a setup uh, for the, how the interviews going to go. But if you look on YouTube, you can see his videos. And he's uh, he's aggressive against what he calls radical feminism. So it's a lot better than other uh, journalists and stuff like that. They would just be you know gushing over feminism constantly. Susanna, though, as we'll see, is a full full born uh, full blown feminist. You know, hundred percent. At least so she thinks, right? Anyway, we'll get back into it. And oh, I'm not even on the video, whatever. The more radical end of the feminism world, although I personally identify as a feminist in the sense of what it should mean, which is equality for women in all Watch things. Watch out, you're at war with Anthony. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, no, no, I'd be surprised though. I mean, are you, at your heart, are you a feminist who believes in equality or are you against equality? Are you asking me if I'm a feminist? Yes. Yeah. I'm absolutely not a feminist in any sense of the term, 0% feminist. But yeah, However, but I, I, absolutely support, I absolutely support equality before the law for men and women, for everyone. But that is, that is actually at the heart of feminism. Feminism has been hijacked by many, Completely wrong. many groups. Fake news, F feminism, disagree. No, no, Anthony, Anthony. Oh, he's not a fan of yours anymore. Yes. Sorry, feminism, Pierce, lost him. Feminism. So this is where things start to, right off the bat, you know, get a little combative. Uh, if you notice that right away, they're asking me about equality. They're trying to frame feminism in this glowing halo of equality, equality, equality. And even in doing so, it's difficult to get out of too, but I was able to do it, I think. Um, I really do prioritize and I believe strongly in equality before the law. 
everyone should be treated equally and fairly and justly before the law. And if you notice, I was specific to say that. I didn't say equality for men and women in every area of life. Like, for example, in relationships, I think that's unhealthy and, and depolarizing, and it leads to the collapse and the end and the death, uh, either in slow motion or rapidly, of relationships. But as far as the law is concerned, 100,000 million percent. And feminists, I don't believe, do that at all. They don't. They hate equality before the law because it doesn't benefit them. Equality, in a sense, it does, but they don't. It doesn't overly benefit them. There's no privilege in that. Anyway, this is kind of combative right off the bat. And they're trying to pigeonhole me to uh, to agree with their assessment of feminism, that it's all just about equality, 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 which is a standard uh, spin kind of narrative, the standard propaganda that feminists have been waging as a PR campaign, you know, public relations campaign for over 100 years now. It's all bullshit. And you'll see that uh, discussed a little bit more throughout the interview, but I wanted to give a little commentary on that. Back to the interview. At his heart, the, the literal translation of what the feminist movement originally began as was a fight for equality. What's happened is that, that was a long time ago, yeah. right? But do, you support right. that, though, don't you? You support the the principle of equality. You can try as hard as you like to be on the same side, Pierce. But Feminism I'm you does are not both mean equality anymore, other. and it has not in a long time. Feminism equality means equality. Feminism does not mean equality. If they really cared about equality, and I wish they did. It would call it equalism and things like that, but okay. they don't. Okay, what are, the things, what are you going to teach us at this concept. convention, Anthony Dream Johnson? What, what will I learn if I pay my $999 to turn up and be uh, talked to by yeah. men about how to be a good woman? Because I think I might need yeah, some Yeah, so the tips. 22 convention. <laughs> yeah, come on out and have a good time. It'll be a great time. So the 22 convention is the mansplaining event of the century. That's its <laughs> destiny. It's coming up soon in Orlando, Florida this May. And I'm only one of the speakers. I'm actually more like Obama, like a community organizer. And I'm organizing about 20 speakers to put together. And they're the top mansplainers in the world. I've been doing that my entire life. So tell me what Since you mansplained years old to me. Over 13 I'm years. quite an expert at being mansplained to you. So just, just tell me what you teach me. My speech. So, well, look, Piers is a fantastic mansplainer. You're, You're in good right. company. <laughs> yeah. uh, my speech at the convention, one of about 20, so I'm just one of 20 speakers at the event, yeah. is going to be on motherhood first. And I believe that feminists, when they present a choice to women between career and motherhood, it's a fake choice. It's not real because okay. they're pushing an agenda behind it to push them to delay motherhood. And I think okay, most women, hang not on, all of them, but most women will be happier I'm not, motherhood I'm not, first. I can't, motherhood turn up to first. Your, I can't turn up to your lecture. I'm a mother with a successful career. I'm very happy for you. That's wonderful. I think right. you made a great choice. I think motherhood is awesome. I mean, you should have as many babies as you want yeah. and not get bullied by feminists for it. No, but I am Which a many of them do now. There are women I wasn't up for bullied me by anybody. I had as many children as I wanted, and I've got a career, so I'm not sure what you're... You, you might you be telling confused. me that was wrong? I, I think feminism, as, as Pier, Piers has been discussing here or hinting at, I think feminism has collapsed into rampant, sexist, man-hating bigotry and female supremacism. I don't hate That's any men. That's what these men. hashtags mean. Toxic masculinity, the future is female. I'm not female. Where's my future? Okay, let's... Sorry, guys, I was muted there. So I think it's a great break point. We can pause here for a second and have some discussion. So I think I just made history in that uh, part of the video. So this is a major TV interview in front of like a million people, Piers Morgan. And I believe I'm the first man in history on, you know, national TV, international TV like that to describe, you know, clearly and articulately feminism as rampant, sexist, man-hating bigotry, that the movement has collapsed into that uh, very harshly and very openly at this point, very brazenly. And those of you in the manosphere that have, you know, subscribers of the channel and you, you know, follow our speakers and stuff, this is not news to you, but to the average person, to the average normie, male or female, this uh, description is jarring and abrasive because it's true and they haven't heard it. They might have felt it, you know, seeing these, the marches and hashtag toxic masculinity and all the anti-man, anti-father stuff uh, that you see in the media. But to see it called out on TV like this uh, very clearly and very seriously is unusual. The fact that it's kind of you know funny and the, you know make women great again and the hat and all these things, that gives it a uh, it kind of colors it, makes it even more interesting. But really, I think it's it's historical here to see this happening, rampant sexist man hating bigotry, and you can actually see now Susanna is even she's scratching her head. This is like body language. She's uh, she's kind of confused here because I'm I'm uh, disturbing her cognitive dissonance or I'm, I'm you know I'm causing problems here for. Her. Uh, she can't, you know, what I just called out here with the toxic masculinity and the future is female. I just said to her, 
the future is female. You know, I'm not female. Where's my future? And, you know, she's probably said this line or she's seen it said a thousand times. The future is female. Never thought once to, to start to pause and reflect on what that really meant. But what it means is it's a very negative feature for boys and for men and for fathers. Uh, the future is female is, and I've said this in my speeches, is a supremacist slogan. It is a female supremacist slogan for nasty women to use to beat up and attack men and provide privileges to women that they don't deserve, uh, like being treated unequally before the law over and superior to men, which is bad. It's bad for you know a lot of things, for the law and for, for society and for culture and for families and for children uh, and all kinds of things. Anyway, I'll keep playing the video here and I'll shut up for a little bit. But that was a pretty, pretty great moment. It gets even better now because they're about to bring in Janice. And they they think they think now you're going to see Janice brought in. And they don't really know. So I forgot to tell you guys too. A couple more things here. Uh, number one, I can't see them. They can see me and they can see Janice. They can see all of us, me and Janice, very clearly. Janice and I are staring into a camera. We can't see anything. Uh, and they also, you know, I heard Piers Morgan and Susanna talking before the show started, before you guys saw it on the video go live. And I could hear them having a conversation, being thrown papers and whatever their producers were giving to them. And they didn't know anything about us. This was thrown at them. Their producers that I've been talking to prepared it. They were fascinated by it, uh, what we're doing with Make Them Great Again. But uh, they didn't know anything about Janice either, other than what their producers told them, Professor and you know all these things. So they didn't really know if she was going to be in favor of what we're going to talk about, Make Women Great Again, or against it. And this, I think, kind of catches them by surprise by uh, what you're about to see here. So just get forewarning that they're they're highly surprised by what happens next, I believe, and they're not anticipating it at all. So here we go. Bring in uh, Janice <laughs> Fiamengo. Well, your, Janice Fiamengo, your future you, is mansplaining to women, apparently. Janice Fiamengo, you, you are an anti-feminist Canadian professor. There, there is an argument, uh, Janice. I, you know, I do have issues with the more radical arm of feminism. I think some of it is just, you know, grotesque. Uh, but at my heart, I am a feminist who believes absolutely in all forms of gender equality. So what is your issue with this, uh, this premise that feminism is a good thing? My issue with the premise that feminism is a good thing? Well, I, uh, like Anthony, would take issue with the idea that feminism has anything to do with gender equality. Um, if you look back to the roots of feminism, you can see that from the very beginning, feminists argued on the basis of female moral superiority, and that has been very much the case, especially but for the last not true. 50 that's years. That's not true. Um, no, no, I, hang as, on, hang on, that's not true. Yeah, well, Actually, I, the I'll give you some examples well, let me, let me give like, you what, uh, let, me get, let me say what I say, it's not true. Actually, the feminist movement really began with Emmeline Pankhurst, the suffragette who fought for the right of equality of a vote in this country. That's really where it started. Mm -hmm. So when you say that it started from a position of superiority, Emmeline Pankhurst wasn't fighting to be superior to men. She was fighting she not was to fighting, be inferior. She was fighting the complete opposite. She didn't want to be inferior to men. She wanted women to have the same right to vote. That's how it began. How, how yeah, many, how, vote, how, right uh, how long, long did men ago. have the vote? How, 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 um, how many uh, years was it between all men having the right to vote and women having the right to vote. What's that in got Great to do Britain. with it? Answer me that. What's that got to do with it? It has yeah, everything to do with it because, in fact, we have a false notion. We have a false notion that men had the right to vote for many years before women had the right to vote. And, in fact, that's not the case. Many of the men who fought in the First World War did not have the right to vote. And so right there is an example of how feminism has lied to us about its origins and its aims because it's taught us a false history of the past. Many of us have the idea that men had the right to vote for decades. There were many men, young men, yeah. men without it was, property. Well, because it was based property on property and That's right, income but I'm not sure. qualifications. But is, okay, yes. but, but Look, why is that part of your argument? So to reiterate, guys, not only can Janice and I not see them on camera, which is useful for, you know, understanding someone, what they really want to communicate, vocal inflection, you know, facial expressions, things like that. They could see us. We can't see them. But on top of that, you don't even know if you're on TV or not. So you can hear all this conversation going on in your ear, little earpiece. So can Janice. But you don't know who's on TV. You have literally no idea what the actual broadcast is looking like. 
should you be talking? Should you not be talking? What can you cut in? You just have to kind of wing it uh, as you go for Janice and I both. And, you know, going forward, I'll much be much stronger favor, stronger favor of being in, uh, in person, you know, in studio kind of interviews because of that. Uh, that's why I was a little bit in the background. I'm trying to, you know, cut in here a little bit, but it's hard to even know what the hell is going on. But Janice, I think is killing it with this. This is a very relevant point and it really caught, uh, I think, Pierre's by surprise. So we'll keep playing her. I think Anthony's trying to talk over you sure. rather ironically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anthony? I'm trying to mansplain. I think well, women I mean, love mansplaining. Is, it's a great really, thing. Uh, women are paying me a thousand dollars a day for mansplaining. We had a ticket it, it, sale. I mean, this that is, that is... Uh, just to be clear, too, I would never in a billion years talk over Janice Famango. I love Janice. She's so sweet and so feminine and so intelligent and so sharply in favor and uh, and diligent with defending men and defending uh, the issues facing men today and attacking and criticizing feminism, which I believe is a super toxic movement. So Janice is amazing, and them characterizing this. I look at my face; I got caught here on video. <laughs> so yeah, them just saying that. There's the uh, stirring the pot a little bit. We'll keep going. It's undeniably true, isn't it? I mean, Professor, why is it that the women are queuing up to pay nearly a thousand dollars to have a man like Anthony tell them how to be women? People, people here may find that very odd. Uh -huh. Well, you obviously find it odd, but. Um... A lot of women are quite interested in what men have to say. These are women I would expect attending this conference who appreciate men and uh, don't see men as their enemy, don't see themselves as locked in a struggle with men, and don't see themselves as the victims of male subjugation or male oppression. And I would like to say that as someone who's been involved in, in academic work and university teaching for many years, I've seen all sorts of workshops and conferences and programs that are designed to help men overcome their toxic masculinity. Now, I think that a conference called Make Women Great Again is a lot more benign sounding, a lot more positive. A, a, a conference that is about men and women connecting and talking about okay. love and marriage, what makes a marriage work is a lot more positive okay, let's hold than what your... we see now, which is a lot of women telling men, a lot of women telling men what men need to do in order and to that, be yeah. that decent is a very, human beings. That is a very fair point. We're going to mm. hold it there, have a, a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll get the reaction from our, I love the fact our that two guests here in the studio. Radical do you call yourself radical feminist? I think I do today. Yes, <laughs> today I will be. I love, I love the fact <laughs> that women will give men that advice for free, but <laughs> men are charging a thousand dollars to tell What's women. What's interesting is that you have a female professor agreeing with it. So let's get this debate going. So that's before the commercial break. It'll be uh, come back in a second here. I added the commercial out for you guys. <clears throat> so I think what just happened here is really important, and you can hear even Pierce say it at the end. He's like, "What's interesting is you know they have an anti-feminist professor or whatever, you know, agreeing with them or something." Um, you're actually so what just happened is Janice talked for a while. She had her her thing here, right? Her little uh, segment. They do not allow her back to talk again throughout the entire rest of the interview. It's another like 10 minutes now. And I think the reason they did that, there's a couple reasons. First of all, Piers is, is good at what he does. He's kind of an asshole. He's known for being an asshole. This is not surprising. But they sense, he senses in particular more than I think even Susanna does. Janice is a threat to them in a way that I'm not. For me, I'm combative. I have, I can say these things. I can trip them up. You know, all these little funny things, right? But I'm not as old as Janice. Janice is much older than me. Um, I don't know. She's in her 40s or 50s or something. Um, so she's a different generation than me, basically. She's the same generation, I would imagine, as Piers and Susanna. Uh, maybe even a little bit older than Susanna. I don't know. Anyway, she's not my age. I'm younger. They can attack me more. Uh, it's much more uh, acceptable to attack an, you know, a young man who's assertive like this, even a little bit aggressive, wearing a red red Trump style you know, kind of hat. With uh, Janice, they... You know, attacking a woman on TV is kind of, there's a couple, like, I think, evolutionary problems with that. It would look bad for Pierce to do that. Susanna would have a little more leeway to do it in The Feminist, but even then, it's it would it could turn into a catfight. And it would, Pierce would be cut out, which he doesn't want as the, the main interviewer here, the main host. So I think uh, Janice presents a, a unique threat to them that I don't. And they have far less options for attacking her than they do me. So they can get together, the four of them, and talk to me and you know argue with me and all this stuff. 
And with Janice, they don't have that option. Uh, she's also very, very intelligent, very articulate, very well spoken. So when you combine all that together, uh, it's kind of good pot, good cop, bad cop. And Janice is the good cop, and they don't want her talking. And I think that's why they focus on me throughout the rest of the interview. Maybe it's more dramatic for them too and stuff, but I really think that Pierce kind of got shook, kind of got scared uh, by Janice that he that she would just walk all over him if if she kept talking. Not to mention Susanna. Susanna would have no chance, I think, going to bat with Janice like that. <clears throat> so that's actually pretty much the last you see of Janice. You might see her speak for one second, you know, throughout the rest of the thing, but uh, that's about it. So I'll keep playing. Back to the show. Monday, 20th of January, 2020, live from Television Center. This is Good Morning Britain with Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid. Welcome back to Good Morning Britain. We are finding out how men can make women great again because uh, in Orlando, Florida, is a man charging almost $1,000, Anthony Dream Johnson, to all the women turning up to his convention. He wants to abolish feminism. Uh, in Vancouver, we have Janice Fiamengo, an anti-feminist Canadian presser, professor from the University of Ottawa. She supports the convention. But let's talk to Olivia Petter, who is a journalist at The Independent, and feminist and writer Rebecca Reed. Um, Rebecca, what do you make of what you've heard so far? Are you going to pay up? I mean, if I had $999, I'd be getting on a plane right now because I definitely need to know how to be a woman. It's so confusing every day. I don't know how to put clothes on or brush my hair. Uh, I have a husband who obviously hates me. I'm 29 and childless. I, I've achieved nothing. I'm mortified. Um, he wasn't really saying that. So we I don't even know how to just like in the interview, you could see my eyebrow. I'm like, what the fuck is this woman talking about? Uh it's not like a confession that, you know, she's trying to be sarcastic in these things about I don't have any children, you know, whatever. She's obviously fat, she's overweight, uh, she's sick if you consider obesity and you should. A disease of civilization that can lead to diabetes and other health problems. Um, so I think she knows she's a feminist poster child, overweight. You know, no kids, uh, no husband, all these things. Yeah, I mean, it's not, she's trying to play it off like it's funny, but in the reality, it's not funny. Uh, so it is interesting. And Olivia, the other chick, um, she's another poster child of feminism, just not the fat one that we would, uh, would be the worst of the worst, right? So Piers now actually, Piers is smart enough to see that, you know, it's not what I'm saying. And again, he's going to play devil's advocate and side with feminism throughout this, but I really think he has a personal problem with it and he doesn't like it. And that's why for a mainstream news personality uh, who is kind of controlled, you know, and all that, he pushes pretty far and pretty hard against it uh, for, for who he is and his position and stuff like that. Not enough to get him fired, obviously, but he pushes against it as best he can. And as much as he might not like me, he doesn't like feminism as well. And so I think throughout the interview, you'll kind of see that, uh, that theme play out and the way he carries through the interview and leads everything. Was he? I mean... Olivia, it's interesting the way that the pair of them phrase this. There is an argument that the more radical end of feminism has created this atmosphere that all men are toxic, that toxic masculinity has to be eradicated. We saw Gillette, you know, actually having to do a massive U-turn after going all woke about we this. We saw and then realizing Fox leaving men, his girlfriend but most men are, that Most men don't so identify much. as toxically masculine, and actually masculinity in itself is a thing to be applauded. So there is an argument. This may not be the right way to do it, but is there a genuine debate to be had about the nature of feminism and where the line should be drawn? I think at its core, there is absolutely nothing radical about feminism whatsoever. And the irony is that people who feel threatened by feminism, people like Anthony, are actually probably the ones who need it the most and are actually probably victims of the very things that feminism seeks to eradicate, such lie. as gender OK, Anthony, do you want to respond to that? You need feminism in your life, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, she said there's nothing... She said there's nothing... Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing radical about feminism. There are prominent American feminists like Linda Gordon calling for the destruction of the American family throughout America, Canada, and the UK. That, in my opinion, is extremely radical. In fact, it's probably a national security threat that should be examined by the American and Canadian and UK governments. Uh, it's just, extremely well, serious. Just because there are and some in individuals you noticed, that you take issue with doesn't mean that there is fundamentally a problem the family, at the heart of them. And family and single oh, mothers yeah, and broken I'm families and all this stuff. Okay, Rebecca, you see, it's interesting. 
So a couple things. The delay here got even bigger, I think. Although at the end, I am talking over. So sometimes I'm talking over these people on purpose. Other times I'm not. The delay is just like ridiculous, like five seconds and shit. Uh, that's why, I mean, the girl, if you noticed too, that was funny. Um, when I said, you know, excuse me here, I'm mansplaining. Uh, she laughed. And I think she could not refuse to laugh. I think that got her. That uh, that intensity and that focus and the, it was obviously a joke. But, you know, the seriousness of which I delivered it and was able to pull off that stone face, uh, that kind of forced her to laugh, and you know, with that. Um, so we'll keep playing it. But I want to make a point here too, though. It's a big point. So I think it's historical what I just said here in that part of the interview. It's an historic moment for the Manosphere as president of the Manosphere. But as far as anyone, any content creator, any leader, any organizer in the Manosphere ever, 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 20, 20 some years now, I just called feminism a national security threat to America, Canada, the UK, the Western allies, essentially, the Western nations. And I mean that. And to my knowledge, it's the first time in history someone's gone on a major TV show and said that about feminism and said it seriously. And I think that actually kind of got them by surprise. And I believe that to the bone. I believe feminism is the most serious threat that America and the West faces uh, as a culture and as a civilization. So not just America, but all the Western nations. Feminism is a lethal kill shot, like I was discussing with that woman, a professor actually, you know, a pretty famous uh, feminist professor who has been calling for a long time now, years and decades, for the destruction of the American family. Other organizations that are feminist and stuff, even Black Lives Matter, they call for the destruction of the nuclear family. It's insane. And if that ever happens, and feminists have made a lot of progress with it, they're not just saying it, they've been doing it. They've been making, they've been making progress for decades and decades and decades. The rise of single motherhood and broken families as one example of that, it's about 70% for black families in America and 40% for whites and similar for Hispanics, about 39, 40%. Only the Asians are down lower, like 13, 15% or something like that. Regardless, if the American family collapses, if the nuclear family collapses and becomes a thing of the past, the nation will collapse. Anything else uh, outside of this, you know, all this climate change bullshit, uh, legitimate threats, foreign threats, foreign powers, uh, you know, monetary issues, economic collapse, dollar collapse. There's a million things that could kill off, you know, Western civilization that could happen, right? Who knows? World War III, whatever. But at the end of the day, I think the one that is most likely, that is the most serious, and that is facing us directly uh, head on and immediate and is happening, and I think is certain to happen if we don't stop it, if we don't change course for American history, is feminism killing the American family. If that happens, it's game over. You know, you'll see whatever the tertiary, the auxiliary effects that are, a Soviet stock collapse, a dollar collapse, economic collapse, a uh, serious rise of socialism and communism in the United States to uh, actual formal power. Whatever it is, is not good. It, it will be the end of America and the end of, of Western civilization. So I think feminism is a serious national security threat, and it should be examined, if it hasn't already been, uh, as a threat to the security of the entire, the entire country by the military or the you know national security agencies or whatever. So I think it's the first time that was done, and I'm proud of that. I really wanted to get that out, and I'm glad I did. I thought it was a good opportunity. Now, with that said, back to the interview. Maybe immediately def very defensive. There's nothing wrong with any form of feminism. I would argue there is actually, that some of the more radical stuff is actually quite dangerous. Do you think there's a line between feminism, I identify as a feminist, is what I understand it to be. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and the more radical arm that can be quite man-hating, can be very anti-masculinity. Um, I think that we have to remember feminism is not an organized movement. We don't have an AGM and we don't sit down and agree some bullet points. No, so it's so not a grievance. It's not, yeah. it, it's, and, and in the same sense that Christianity has at one end churches that welcome people to come with their same-sex partner and at the other end the Westboro Baptist Church, feminism does have a spectrum. And yes, I probably sit slightly further towards the middle. Um, do what you like, be happy, wear lipstick, don't wear lipstick. Um, there are people at one end who are very, who do feel very angry with men. However, I can sort of see why they feel angry with men because men have, in quite a lot of contexts, not been the nicest to women in the past. And I would just say on the point about toxic masculinity, it's not so, we're not saying that masculinity is toxic. We're yeah. saying that, masculin that there are some aspects of it that can be. It's mm -hmm. like acid rain doesn't mean rain is All right, bad. Olivia, say some nice stuff about men. No, that's fake news. They <laughs> wait, wait a second, I think if we're going to talk about... Anthony, wait a second. About a year ago. Wait a second. Olivia, say some nice stuff about men. If we're going to talk about radicalised feminists being dangerous, we need to actually take a closer look at the views that people like Anthony are perpetuating mm. and look at their rhetoric, and it's the same rhetoric we see in the darkest corners Can you be positive internet. about men and masculinity? 
there is so much to be positive about men and masculinity. Any? Do you say anything? <laughs> no, because so anything I say will sound, will sound like well, you I'm said there's so much. Name one thing. thing. Name men. one thing that I like about men. Yes. It'd be the same thing I like about a woman. I'm not going to gender stereotype. Was there anything about masculinity you like? It's the same thing I like about femininity. But really? So kindness all, all women and all men are exactly the same. Generosity of spirit and humour, and those total, aren't traits that are specific. Right. Well, there's nothing men about masculinity that you actually like. No, because I think By actually way, if you independent... separate... So th this is just amazing. And good on Piers. I was telling you guys. A lot of you guys don't like Piers Morgan. I get it. Uh, he's a mainstream media dude. He's, he's pretty well controlled. And, you know, he says a lot of stupid shit. But he says some good shit, too. And he, he went after this woman hard, man. Hard. She can't name one fucking thing that she likes about men and masculinity. Not one. In fact, not only does she not do that, she can't. There's nothing because she fucking hates men. That's what Piers is sniffing out here and he's pulling it out of her. Beautifully. Beautifully, man. And I know people said he was beating up on me and Janice and all that. Who cares, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, that's the nature of going on TV, I think, with guys like this. And that's what you expect with Piers Morgan anyway, right? It's who he is. It's what he's done for decades or years or however long he's been on the air. But going after her for this is good. And he's he's displaying the ridiculous bullshit that feminists believe. Average feminists, too. Not like the radical ones. They're all fucking radical. Radical feminism is feminism now. And he's also trying to think, bring that out and bring that to the forefront a little bit. I'm doing that, obviously, more aggressively in Janice as well. But uh, really, you know, kudos to Piers for pulling this out of her. She can't name one thing. She can't name one fucking thing she likes about men and masculinity. She takes it a step further and equates all masculinity and men to basically to women as well. Because that's how she actually thinks. This is critical race theories, is gender theory, and all this this weird bullshit that they believe. This insane Marxist garbage. Uh, she has basically erased the concept of biological sex, and there being any differences at all. Uh, I would assume she would mean significant or meaningful, but really any when it comes down to it. There's no difference to men and women. We're all just people. We're just people, yo. It's people, bro. Just people. Just do what you want, bro. We're just all people. And this is really sick bullshit. Uh, it's not natural. It's not scientific. It's not reasonable. Uh, never before in history have people been this stupid and abandoned common sense at this scale in public on TV. I mean, she actually believes this bullshit, which is just so, like super stupid. And good on Piers again for uh, calling this out and showing to the world that a feminist working for the independent, she's not some, she's not on a street corner wearing a pink hat, screaming at a bullhorn. She works for like a major news outlet, writes pieces about feminism and against men and misogyny and toxic masculinity and all this bullshit they make up and she can't name one fucking thing that she likes about men and masculinity sick shame on this woman olivia whatever the fuck her name is anyway we'll keep playing enjoy more of the interview masculinity and femininity is two separate entities you're only going to talk about gender stereotypes i don't think there's any way to talk about there are about clearly masculine traits aren't there i mean there are but we all have them different we all have them but i think we all have them within ourselves i have masculine traits and mm -hmm. feminine traits all tangled up and so women can be more strong dominant powerful well, shouty men can be softer okay, kind okay, of anthony's just, trying to jump in again do He's we have a new button don't even exist this is delusional Okay, Anthony, Absolutely. Can, Anthony, the independent the has been point... slandering us, no, first of all, in the news, speak. which is defamatory and disgusting. Say that again, Anthony. Yeah, so the independent, one of these women is from the independent, right? She probably wrote the article. <laughs> one of these women. Hello? Okay. Yes, yep. Olivia, yeah. Have a name. That one. Olivia. Yeah. Go on, Anthony. Yeah. We're all waiting, oh, okay, yeah, Anthony. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. It's hard to hear you guys. Okay. Anthony. Yeah, the independent put out an article calling us dis disturbingly misogynistic. Our event has 0% misogyny, and they called us that. Pointed out, they didn't cite a single example. They're just slandering us as misogynistic, which is nonsense. We're the most pro-woman event in the world, 100% yeah, funded by women who love women, mansplaining, though, are paying $1,000 a ticket for it. They're going to be mansplained to for three days straight, mm -hmm. nonstop, by the best mansplainers in the world. Anthony, how period. are ticket sales? Are you sold and you're, out? You're disturbed by that. That's blowing up your narrative. How are ticket sales? Have you, have, have you We've sold out? dozens of tickets at this point. Do Thousands, dozens we had, of we're tickets. We're expecting over dozens 200 women tickets. at this point. 200. But you're missing the point. You're missing the point. We film the events and publish the speeches to millions of people free to the world, just like the TED event. We're so, going to reach millions of young women so that have not been brainwashed women aren't by paying feminism yet. Dollars. And we're going to no. change the course Anthony, of the generation. Anthony, can I ask you a question? And it might be a little personal, but are you married? Uh, yeah, here we go. This crap now. But uh, I brought up a point that the mainstream media, I mentioned this in my interview recently with Jennifer Molesky, an uh, anti-feminist YouTuber. But the mainstream media, it goes over their head, our master grand plan behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz or whatever the fuck, right? So they don't really get what we're doing. They think it's about a conference. They think it... In, 
there is a conference, obviously, the 22 convention, a, you know, convention for women. Now we're about to do it in two weeks uh, as of the filming of this video. It's coming up here in Florida. Get your tickets now. Link in the description. But they're not really seeing the big picture. Uh, you can't change the world, so to speak. You can't change America. You can't change hundreds of millions of women by getting them to a conference. It's ridiculous. We could have 4,000 women show up. And what is that going to do? Maybe change 4,000 women's lives, 4,000 relationships. That's not nothing. But what is that going to do for the fate of a nation and the future of the West and the future of men and women and gender relations that are collapsing all around us? Feminism, like I said, is a national security threat. It's serious. It will kill the American family if it's not stopped and abolished. Uh, it has to be stopped. And the only way to do that is with video and audio production, high quality stuff, TV level stuff that we do at 21 Studios. So that's the real magic is filming the speeches, filming the conference. How many women come, come to the event, show up, doesn't really matter. It could be 2,000, it could be 200, it doesn't matter. It's literally irrelevant. And they don't get that because they're not, fair enough, they're not in the industry, they're not in the business. But peers in particular should see that, I think, and Susanna as TV hosts. You know, they don't work at a newspaper. They're working for a TV show. And by filming this content and uh, being inquisitive as, as if, if they were legitimate journalists, right, they'd want to know. But filming these speeches and publishing them, we reach millions of men per year, and we're going to reach millions of women. Just like, the, just like the campaign itself, Make Women Great Again, reached 150 million people. So through technology and through the internet and through video production, you will always reach a much, much, much larger audience. And if you want real change, it's what has to happen. You know, meeting up in person is fantastic. It's actually very, very powerful on an individual basis for men and for women. But as far as massive impact, uh, it just, you know, it doesn't do a lot. It, 2,000 to 200, 4,000, it's all chump change. You need to reach millions and millions and millions. And we can do that through 21 Studios here on YouTube and our extended publication network of the speakers. Uh, for example, the speakers like Elliot Hulse will publish his speech to 800,000 people on his channel. And then probably his Instagram, another 300, 400,000 people. And then we'll publish it at 21 Studios to 240,000. And then George Bruno will pu publish his uh, speech to 200 and, or what does he have, 155,000. This is how you make real change. And they don't see that. So it's kind of a little tangent here. But now it gets personal. Now they're going to come after me, right? Now he just asked me, are, are you married? Are you married? Let's see, let's see what happens here. It's not the conference. You're over focused. Yeah, go ahead. Are you married? Uh, I'm not right now, no. Do you have a partner? No. Why, why do you think it is that no woman has quite bought into partner? your no. sales pitch? Perhaps he needs to go women to Women are buying it every day. They just yeah, but nobody wants, to, nobody wants to marry you or be with you, it seems. I mean, why are women racing to be with the guy? No. So what's not being said here, I don't know if it was a good idea to uh, omit it or to present it. I did not. You'll see in a second here. You know, I have, I've been single for like five years now. I bang women regularly uh, from bars and Tinder. Bars, they're open anyway. They're not open lately, but Tinder, you know, these things. You know, fuck buddies and this kind of uh, friends of benefits setup. And I guess for this kind of interview about make women great again, that's probably not the best. Uh, I don't think women should be promiscuous, to be honest. Now, I'm not going to stop them if they want to, you know, jump on my dick, but it's not a good idea for them. And there's a lot of research and statistics and videos that go into this. Uh, Stefan Molyneux and you know, Socrates, many of our speakers, dozens of them have talked about this. Prom promiscuity, promiscuous behavior. Uh, Pat Stebman is another one too on Twitter I've seen talking about this. But it's bad for women. It destroys them very quickly. For men, I think eventually it can be bad, but it has to be ridiculous numbers, like really like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women to really accumulate that much trauma. But for women, it happens like blazing fast, man, lightning. So I didn't bring this up in the interview, but I've been banging girls for years since I've been single, you know, about five years now, outside of the a, you know monogamous relationship, so to speak. So I didn't bring this up on TV, and I don't know what they would have done if I did. But you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda would have been interesting for sure. No, actually, I bang you know three to four women you know a week, whatever. Uh, not new ones usually, but sometimes. So we'll keep going here, but this is the uh, the personal section that actually inspired some of its own news articles and stuff when we kind of go back and forth there. So let's play the video. I can tell I'm, I'm them how to lead their lives. Hey, you, look, you want to get into my personal life. Why are you being so nosy? Why are you got to be so nosy, man? I get you so judgy. No, no, I'm living my life the way I want. I'm having Anthony. a great time. He's being judgy. I look forward to getting married Anthony, today. Anthony, you are the single family. most judgmental guest I think we've ever had. I'm just yeah. saying, you're doing a whole conference telling women <laughs> how to be better hey, women and be great again. Speakers. But you seem to be... <laughs> so, 
just uh, you know, just patting myself on the back, Piers Morgan has called me the most judgmental guest he's ever had on the show. Coming from this guy, that's that's saying a lot. And the people who watch this, uh, the uh, UK media and shit, they had a they had a pretty good laugh about this. But I mentioned too as well, though, that I'm single on purpose, and I thought that was pretty good. It's hard to hear with all the talking and stuff. But like most of you, you should probably probably be single on purpose. Dating today for young men is very dangerous. Uh, it's not completely off the books, I think, but some of you would argue against that. You would disagree with maybe some of the MGTOW guys and whatnot. But sure as shit, whatever you want to do as a young man in America today, it's like Trump said, it's a scary time to be a young man in America. It is. You can get me too. You can get false domestic violence accusations, false rape allegations, false sexual assault allegations, blah, 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 blah. Inside or outside of a relationship, but in a relationship, uh, I think the probability or the potential of these things goes even higher. You know, cohabitation, Obviously, marriage contracts can fucking end up in divorce rape and do very frequently. Child custody issues, you know, men get screwed in divorce court, family court left and right. They lose custody of their children like 80% of the time or something crazy. So I think single on purpose is a good way to put that. And I don't know how many people were to hear that, but yeah, dating is uh, dangerous today. So we'll see how I keep going here. Be struggling most of yourself our speakers to persuade any women and to be with you. I'm just saying, don't most think of our well, think, does it come from a, fathers from a and husbands. Of personal the frustration. single guys like me are a minority of this. This is important too. I forgot about this part. I haven't seen this in a while. But most of the speakers at 22 convention, specifically the women's one, are, you know, for women here coming up soon, are married and have children. They're husbands and fathers, literally. Uh, there's only like one or two single guys like me, bachelors, that don't have any kids and stuff like that. So for the most part, it's actually what they're trying to avoid and ignore, which is the same way they're avoiding, by the way, Janice, who's still on the show here, just uh, you know, quietly. Uh, it's mostly fathers and husbands. A lot of these guys have two, three, four, five kids and whatever. So they're patriarchs, right? They're, they're the leaders of their family, too. They're not just like beta schlub dad bod. Like These are fathers that, that really mean it. They're strong, radical fathers. As uh, Elliot, I've seen put it lately, Elliot Hulse. They don't like that. That blows up the narrative a little bit more. They just want to go after young guys like me that are speaking at the conference and organizing it. But I had a lot of fun, though, insulting them there. You know, I got to say, uh, you know, nosy and judgy and this bullshit. I'm just like mouthing shit off just to, just to troll these people at this point. But we'll keep playing, see how it goes. Is it can we just keep talking, Anthony? We, we should just keep out of it. Or? This is this is fake news, a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Look, Piers, you should be a speaker at the convention. I, I'm serious. You'd be great. The women will love Please you. Don't Obviously, go to they the already convention. do. They want to hear from you, they want to learn from you. This is an opportunity to do that. Final question, Anthony. What would and you all like? All this personal stuff. These are just ad hominem attacks. Anthony, if you, would you like yeah. to be married yourself? Absolutely. Looking and forward to it. What, what, and what kind of wife would you Describe like? Describe your perfect woman. I'm going to have the the mother of my children will be the greatest woman ever, the greatest mother ever, and the greatest wife ever. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome, of course. Do you think your what expectations are a little high? I want a beautiful woman, smart, virtuous, and amazing. Are you single? No, not at all. No, Olivia's fact, single. Women tend Olivia's to have single. Olivia's Maybe. single. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so this is fucking... I, damn, I haven't watched this part in a while. This is funny. Yeah, this is... Uh, There's coming at me, coming at me. What I should have said, probably... Number one is I should have been more... Uh, some criticism here for myself, but... I should have actually taken the focus more from Piers to Susanna. That would have been a lot more entertaining, I think. Um, I came up with a name for her later. I should have called her Mary Poppins. She reminds me of Mary Poppins. She kind of does as an American, right? And I should ask if she had any daughters my age. That would really like rile them up like through the roof, right? I think Susanna for her age looks fine. She looks great. And just enough uh, genuinely to get some really genuine teasing and some trolling like that. Uh, and you know, other girls I've talked to that have seen this, you know, they think Susanna wants to fuck me. I think they're right. Uh, she is triggered by my presence on TV. But also, I think attracted. And Olivia here too. Uh, I would never touch Olivia in a million years. But uh, yeah, she probably wants the she wants the D too. Well, we'll keep playing. See how this goes. Okay, Anthony, we appreciate that. you coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you to Janice Viamenga. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca Reed, and Olivia Petzak. Thank you. A very interesting debate. Uh, Thank you. We appreciate Thank it. You. Competition time now. Is Andy? Hang on, details of how to. Win a we, prize of we, missed, grand. we missed the bit where Anthony was going to raise everyone's femininity by 500%. Oh, and how oh, that could you have done that more video, <laughs> Luke? And now for a discount to women aged 18 to 20. Uh, here's Andy. I've got just, just got a little bit of breaking news. Oh. Yep. So that's the interview, guys. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun on that one. And uh, they, I've actually talked to them since then. I might be uh, on there again at some point. We'll see. 
uh, maybe after the event, a lot of news places are hitting me up for post event, how it goes, videos, photos, stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really happy with how I did. Um, not perfect, but for my first time on TV, I'm really happy about it. Really proud. I give myself maybe, you know, rating yourself on TV, right? Whatever. But I'd say for performance, maybe like an A minus. So I thought I did pretty good. Other guys were raving about it. Some of my haters hated me for it. They're like, fuck you, blah, 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 loser. But I think I got some pretty savage shit out, uh, calling Piers Morgan fake news, calling him nosy, judge me, judgy, declaring feminism as a uh, you know rampant sexist man hating bigotry, uh, declaring it and uh, identifying it as a national security threat. Janice getting in there and providing her, uh, I think her generational uh, authority, you know, much older generation than me. Not that's not a really good way to put it. But uh, she's older than me, and she brings that that maturity to the stage that I don't quite have yet at a young age. I was 31 in this interview. So it was a really fun interview. I thought Janice, too, did fantastic. Uh, so much so that they didn't want to bring her back on the show. Uh, it was much, I think, easier for them to come after me and attack me. Just like you saw at the end there. Are you single? You have a wife? Blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. No, I'm single on purpose because that's best for my life right now. I probably will be for a while. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you uh, checking out the video and checking out the interview. You can check the description underneath this video for links to some of the news articles that were mentioned uh, in this video. So the independent article and a couple others I thought were really interesting, really useful. Uh, particularly, you know, check out the one from secularpatriarchy.wordpress.com. You'll see that in the description. It's a fantastic write-up on the Make Women Great Again phenomena. And as a promise in the future, I'll do a full review of the major news articles that came out uh, surrounding Make Women Great Again, the whole media uh, palooza that happened from all this stuff earlier this year. And then a little bit even uh, throughout the year and, you know, even right now. So we'll talk soon. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Anthony Dream Johnson, president of the Manosphere, and as interviewed on Good Morning Britain. Peace out.